Hey, Tim, how's it going? Hey, it's uh, it's going pretty good, man. Pretty good. So let's jump right into it. I, I interrupted you because I wanted to start recording. Uh, so I wanted yeah. to ask you about the leadership race for the Conservative Party. Andrew Scheer stepped down, but you actually brought it up because I mentioned someone was interested in donating to you and you said, oh, well, people have been saying you should run for the Conservative leadership. So that yeah. caught me off guard. So first of all, it's, it's very surprising to me. You said it's $50,000 to just enter the race, which is nuts yeah. to me. But tell me what people are saying, why you should run. Well, I mean, obviously, they're tired of libcons, right? So the, the, yeah. it's difficult to see um, a, a huge difference between the Conservative Party of Canada and the Liberal Party of Canada. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've talked about the reasons for that numerous times on the show. Um, yeah. Like, in, they're, if you're interested in shifting culture... Uh, you have to kind of be on the fringes. But if you're interested in winning government, you have to be right in the middle of the Overton window, which is pretty, which is basically where Sheer and Trudeau, in terms of their platform and their policies, shake out. Now, mm -hmm. I would argue that the reason Sheer is resigning and the reason that he didn't do as well as hoped in the election is because people saw him too far outside the Overton window. In other words, really? he was portrayed in the media as a social conservative right because of his mm -hmm. remarks in the past he had um you know he he had been i think against gay marriage at one time you know it, it, he's seems to be very pro-life in his past life let's say you know he comes from the religious right and so people that that scared the crap out of people right that that really i think hurt his chances and, and you he even though he distanced himself from those remarks and said we're, we're not touching those things and we're not you know, he did do certain things, like he said, he wouldn't take uh, criminalizing cannabis again off the table, for example. OK, that's evidence of his so-called tendencies coming out to a lot of people. Yeah. So what's to say he wouldn't come back out with all these? things? so that scared the heck out of people. Um, and, and he was just too easily portrayed as a, uh, a right wing Boogeyman. social conservative. Right. And that that I just know a lot of people who kind of sit on the fence who are like, somewhat independent in that they go they can vote either way i know a lot of those people and they were just like oh i'm going liberal i wish i could vote conservative but that's sheer just scares the, the heck out of me and i i think that was so it's ahead. interesting because he still did get more popular votes so people weren't too scared of him and i mean i i found it interesting because i mean there was all this hype about maxine bernie at the leadership race but the one article i read it's by scott gilmore so you can take that with whatever salt is needed, he's, yeah, he's advocating, oh, the conservatives need a leader more like Michael Chong, right, who is the most left-wing of the leadership right. candidates, right? He's a red right? Tory. Yeah. Right, and yeah. so... And I, and I would actually agree with that, right? Like, I, th I think that that's what they need. If they want to be seriously win an election, they need someone that can't be portrayed as a social conservative, who has some liberal sensibilities, right? That's concerned about climate change. Who's um, concerned about social justice? They they have to at least virtue signal or have solid bona fides in those areas, right? In terms of their previous history, Sheer had none of that, and he also had this kind of uh, dirty SoCon past that scared well, people. So I would say that you and libertarians are. Uh, definitely not social conservatives, and you do have some liberal bonafi bona fides or bona fides or whatever, because you would legalize drugs, prostitution. These are things that the the hardcore liberals or whatever, the progressives, would be in favor of. So, what are your thoughts on uh, on running? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's interesting, right? I mean, uh, to me. <clears throat> political the, the only point of political activism or running for office is to get ideas out i still hold that shifting culture is more important than getting votes mm -hmm. now that being said who was the guy that that shifted culture won hearts and minds more than anyone else in uh, it, towards liberty in, in in history as far as i can tell and that is ron paul and ron paul um did essentially what I'm being asked to do, which is run in the primaries, right? This this yeah. leadership race will essentially be like the primaries 
for the conservative party while he was running for president and ran in the primaries for the Republican party. And that's where his, these ideas and libertarianism was introduced to a lot of the world and especially to the U S uh, mm -hmm. and to a lot of Canadians as well. So, so that part of it attracts me, right? If, if I could go up there and be the radical I am and hold the conservatives feet to the fire and say, you've lost your way. Um, you, you are, are complicit in the ruination of Western civilization and the undermining of, um, our Liberty. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'm here to reclaim, uh, Western civilization on behalf of my ancestors and your ancestors. Um, maybe that would have some resonance or it would at least, um, put the, those ideas and those thoughts into the minds of Canadians and into the minds of conservatives. Uh, you know, I, I, I doubt that, I don't know, I, I doubt that I could be successful. I doubt that I could win the Conservative Party. I might not even clear the bar to get in a debate or something like that. But um, maybe it would be foolish not to try. Maybe, uh, it, it, you know, we ought to go go for these opportunities when they present themselves and, and think big and um, see where they land. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll always be a libertarian. I will always be a, a radical. I, I can't see that changing. Um, and maybe this is an opportunity to bring that to a bigger stage in a way that Bernier failed dismally to do. You know, he, he was such a soft core. Um, he, he just soft pedaled everywhere, like on all the things that, that libertarians care about, uh, foreign intervention, central banking, uh, the drug war, uh, taxation, like he, he was terrible on foreign, foreign interventionism. Um, he wouldn't even touch the drug war. Uh, he, he wouldn't even get, uh, entertain getting rid of supply management for cannabis when he was presented with that policy proposal. Um, and you know, he, he's, he, he didn't hit very hard on the central bank or on monetary policy. He, he's that, if anything, that's the best thing he's good on and taxation. I mean, if you're afraid to say that taxation is theft, categorically theft, it's taking without consent, then, then how good are you at spreading the libertarian message? Right. So it'd be interesting to see, I, I was hoping Bernier would be like Ron Paul and it would be interesting right. for me to see a Ron Paul like candidate stand on that stage. I can't think of anyone other than myself that fits that bill right now. Um, right. And, and so, um, so I, think it's definitely you, got me thinking. Do you think you missed the chance a bit? Cause you know, now a lot of people who would have supported you might be PPCers. And also mm -hmm. if you had been on that in the realm while Bernier was running in the last leadership race, there was more, you know, hubbub about the race generally. Cause I don't, I don't foresee many Canadians even paying attention to this race. It's not really like the uh, the primaries in the U.S. where it's like a full election, national coverage. It's just kind of a little lame. Well, no, lame that, that's handshake. not quite true. I mean, it was it was it got national attention. It was nationally televised. The the leadership debates uh, and the leadership convention um, for the you know when Sheer won, right? Everyone was like, we were all glued to our sets watching to see if Bernie could beat him out. Mm. And um, that was happening across Canada. And and already the press is speculating about who the next leader could be, right? Because whoever the next leader is, is probably going to be prime minister uh, if they right. choose the right guy, right? If they either choose a red Tory or a libertarian like myself, they, they could win the election. Yeah. Um, so so um, I think it'll get a lot of attention. Um, and I think it's free publicity for the libertarian uh, philosophy. So that, that has certainly got me thinking. Now, there are a lot of obstacles in the way. I mean, first of all, there's a $50,000 non-refundable entry fee that I'd have to come up mm -hmm. with. Uh, I, I think we could probably raise that. I think there's enough people, you know, because I think we could attract a lot of the PPC supporters who were looking. I mean, a lot of the PPC supporters, at least the libertarian leaning ones, signed up with the PPC rather than the Libertarian Party because they thought there's a chance of electoral success, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now that that vision has kind of been ruined for them. Um, and so some of those people, I suspect, would follow me over to the Conservative Party camp. And I, I think there would be a lot of people that would be interested in seeing that message put into the Conservative Party yeah. that they've lost their way. I think there's a lot of silent, quiet conservatives who are um, 
you know, like they're afraid to be radical. And yeah. I say this because there was a conservative MP from Edmonton that wore a, a taxation as theft T-shirt on a plane and caused all this controversy. And then he has had to distance himself from it by saying, oh, that was just a conversation starter and just, you know, trying to be right. funny or whatever. And no, dude, you believe taxation is theft. I know <laughs> you do. You're just too chicken shit to, to say it out loud and to own that. Right. Right. And so I think guys like that, I think there's probably a lot of them in the establishment and a lot of them out there who who are afraid to say that, but would silently support someone. Yeah, you go out there and say that I really right. want culture to shift. I want the conservative party to get more libertarian and you could be that guy. I don't want to risk, uh, you know, they're probably thinking I don't want to risk my status here in the party by coming out and vocally saying this stuff, but you are a dark horse. You're an unknown. You're coming mm -hmm. in from the outside. And I, I want you to, you know, uh, get the conservative heart and soul back to libertarianism. Like Reagan said, you know, the heart of conservatism to him was libertarianism. That's ultimately what was the heart and soul of conservatism. Now, I probably disagree with Reagan. It, it's, it's hard to imagine that that's the heart and soul of conservatism, but I think there might be enough people that believe that, that we could actually get that right and and in a lot of ways look that if what you're trying to conserve is western civilization the reason western civilization is as great as it is as wealthy as it is as um as liberal and freedom loving as it is is because of libertarian ideas not because of conservative or because of left-wing ideas it's because of libertarian ideas this the idea that the individual owns himself that they ought to have property rights that you ought not infringe that liberty that the government's role is not to impose and to centrally plan but to protect the individual those are all libertarian ideas that's why the west is great and that's what conservatives ought to be trying to conserve but instead over the past probably <laughs> well as long as i can remember they have been trying to impose their will on the individual but i think mm -hmm in their heart that there's still this, this, that, that they understand that, but they're scared. Right. And so they need right. a strong leader up there to reassure them that in protecting individual Liberty is actually the best security. You, you can't. And, and that they're right in their thoughts, right? Cause anyone who has these thoughts is being inundated by the media and their own party that they're wrong and that they're bad. And so right. just having a leader say these things that they believe, right. But saying them confidently, steadily, you are right. That's huge. Right. And and I'm really the only guy I can think of in Canada that can say that. Because um, if you are a serious conservative candidate trying to vie for leadership, you have to sound like an establishment hack. You do. I, I mean, like, it's just too risky. You, you, you risk losing you risk having your status as a conservative stripped away you risk being come the laughing stock i don't care about any of that stuff i go right. in there as the underdog not expecting to win uh not expecting i i have no desire to have some kind of conservative status or establishment status i'm in there to be a hellfire and brimstone preacher for liberty essentially and hold their feet to the fire and yeah. um, if they reject that, that's on them. I, I just go back to fighting fires. You know, that's what right. I'm doing right now. I go back to the obscure person I am. Like I have nothing to lose. Right. And so right. that I think makes me the ideal candidate to promote this stuff. And it makes me think like it would build off of the momentum that Maxime had in the last leadership <laughs> election. Right. He almost won with a libertarian ish message. It was right. clear that people were interested in that to some degree. And I mean, the I don't know what the party uh, membership has changed since then, because I mean, he, he would have registered a lot of people. So it did call more attention. People are paying attention to the wider politics more generally, I think, because they know this is all messed up. We need to figure out something. Right. But do you yeah. think do you think sorry, do you think that because. It, you do need members to vote for you. So you'd yep. have to do like, you'd have to get the libertarians to all register as conservatives and try and make that push. Do you think you'd have any sort of chance or, or it would more be about, you know, throwing a grenade into the party a bit and, and the people who, who were kind of attracted by Bernier, 
but then he disappointed they'll see no i can stand for my values and potentially rift the party more and and it's i i mean i know i'm i'm wondering if you're thinking right. it'll be it'll be good regardless but it'll be more towards you know throwing a grenade in and really putting the conservative party on its last breaths or if there's actually hope of reforming it from within um it, it's it would be creative destruction right I, I would go in there like a wrecking ball. And and I, I mean, imagine a conservative party candidate leader standing up and saying, I want gay married couples to be, protect their marijuana plants with AR-15s. Right. OK, it, can you imagine a conservative party saying that? What kind no. of eyeballs it would get? Now, the yeah. establishment conservatives and the serious politicos would poo poo that right they'd be like oh my god we can't have this guy like we, we, we can't support this this isn't a serious candidate um mm -hmm. right a, a, like we have to go with an establishment guy like th this kind of stuff is but who would notice are millions of canadians like think about what happened with ron paul yeah he, he wasn't a serious candidate right he was he was just a radical on that stage saying yeah um we're gonna bring all the troops home we're going to end central banking. We're going to end the drug war. Uh, how many of you here would do heroin if it were legal tomorrow? Uh, and, right. you know, he, he was just like so refreshing. And, and so the establishment Republicans obviously rejected him and did everything to undermine him. And the politicos and the party faithful did not like Ron Paul at all. But he attracted all these people who were apolitical who didn't have anything to do with politics or who were you know uh, kind of progressive and and were liked his progressive things and then because of that they were like hmm what's this economic stuff what's this stuff about central banking and mm -hmm. all of a sudden now they're they're very libertarian and they reject their progressive roots kind of like you right and and yeah. Th that is what I would bring to the race is a whole bunch of people that would suddenly be engaged in what the role of government is, how these parties are identical and they, they would see something refreshing, I think, in, in me. Right. And so that kind of pressure, I think, brings, um, you know, it can help conservative conservatism and help the conservative party become more libertarian i mean if you look at the republican party you saw the rise of justin amash rand paul um i'm trying to remember uh thomas massey uh th th there was a number of uh, suddenly a number of very hardcore liberty uh republicans that kind of had a liberty caucus within the republican party which didn't really exist before ron paul's run for for president uh in right. the primaries so yeah, i think that I think could happen and you know because you've got guys like scott reed you've got pierre mm. po polyver whatever his name is you've got some of these people now the, these guys are great at talking about economic liberty or, or financial right. liberty and and uh, you know they, they kind of espouse a, a libertarian ethos when it comes to economics but they won't touch the other stuff the other liberties with a, a 10 foot mm -hmm. pole right so i want to make it safe for them to touch those and those are the ones that I that that mainstream canadians and especially young mainstream canadians would be more in favor of right it's making right. that connection that will attract more people to the party from other avenues which is important and i think if you bring that message in not only will it show the members who have been tepid in their values it will show the actual mps and the party elite or whatever that they can have values and and i mean it's it's like art right it, it you see someone who's heroic in in your values and then it gives you confidence to be it yourself right yeah yeah, absolutely. so what can I do and what can other people do if they think, yes, Tim, you should do this. Canada needs you. Well, I mean, look, I have a lot of thinking to do. I have to see if there's support for this. You know, I'm also sensitive to the fact that um, I don't want to leave the Libertarian Party in the lurch. I still think it's the best avenue um, for for advancing liberty, because I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is I will most likely get rejected by like they probably won't even let me in the door. You know, first of all, you have to be a member for six months. That can be waived, though, apparently. But are they going to waive it for a guy like me? Probably mm -hmm. not. I have to come up with 50K. They want all your social media accounts. They want that. There's a 40 page questionnaire like the vetting process is quite in depth. 
And really? there's a lot of stuff in my history that would probably disqualify me or that they could probably use to disqualify me. Let's put it that way from being, uh, a, a candidate for the leadership race. Um, but if that happens and I just go back to the libertarian party and, uh, I take all that support with me. Right. And, and we keep going as we're going and we elevate the brand of, of the libertarians, um, either way. So, so I, I, guess- I see it as probably a, a no lose situation, but again, it's a big commitment. Um, I have to get, I haven't even talked to my family about this. Like all this happened just overnight, right? I've just right. been getting all these messages and I'm as at first, like, screw that. Are you kidding me? But then I'm like, you know what? Ah, Ron Paul did it. Why? You know, he, he was a libertarian. He ran as a libertarian for president with the libertarian party before he was ever did the Republican primaries, but it was where at the pri- Republican primaries where he really made a big difference, right? So I can't discount it, but I, I would have to build a team. I would, you know, and by the time this podcast airs, it'll have been probably four or five days since um, of me thinking about it and mm-hmm. talking with people and maybe forming an exploratory committee. And, um, and I guess we'll we'll see what happens. But if you're watching this podcast, um, you know, uh, check me out on social media and see if I've see which way I've decided. And, and hopefully by the time this podcast airs, I'll have made a decision. And if, if I make a decision to run, hopefully there'll be a, a website or a landing page for you to go sign up and support. And, and I will definitely need some help fundraising. I'll need to raise 50 K to, to get into the race. So that would have to start immediately. I think we could do that. And, you know, because ultimately I think my understanding is that 50 K is, is essentially just personal money. Right. So I think I could like normally political donations, you can, you, you, uh, there's a limit, right. Uh, Um, and I think there's, uh, but, but I think just this entry fee is just like personal funds. So if I had a benefactor that wanted to see me in the race and wanted to drop 50 K, um, uh, you know, that would be, that would be acceptable from what I understand of the uh, rules. Cool. Sounds good. Good luck. Hopefully there's a rich guy out there listening to this. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Cool. Thanks, man.